I can't wait to buy a house. Oh, we need to plan a wedding. Should I get a new car? Wait, should I save more for retirement first? Today, we're gonna talk about how to set and save for your financial goals. How's it going? It's Lucera Boy, and today we're gonna talk about how to set and save for your financial goals in 2023. So far in our financial journey, we have a decent income, set up a budget, have an emergency fund, and plan to allocate about 20% or more to save for wealth building. If you don't have these down yet, it might be too early for you to be able to set realistic goals. If so, you should take a step back and set a strong financial foundation first. However, if you are ready, it is time to move on to the next step. The question is, what goals and targets should we set to ensure that we meet our short-term and our long-term goals? These goals could be for a new car, a house, a wedding, or retirement. I think the best way to approach this is to set our longest term for retirement first and then work our way forward from the shortest term goal. The reason I suggest this is because there is significant power in investing as soon as possible and taking advantage of the compound interest. The longer you delay your investing, the more difficult it will be to catch up. Did you know if you invested $7,000 in the market when you were born, in 65 years, it would be worth over $1 million? That's pretty incredible, and that is why you should not take investing early lightly. So with all that being said, let's dive into an example and walk through how to save for your goals. Consider you are 25 years old, you have a salary of $50,000, and you have these goals in mind. One, retire at 65 years old. You need a replacement car in about two years. You'd also like to have a wedding in two years. And in three years, you'd like to buy a house. You already set up a strong financial foundation. After budgeting, you're able to save about 30% of your income and you start to set goals for the money you save. After considering the quality of life you'd like to have when you retire, you believe a salary of $35,000 in retirement will be sufficient. Calculating inflation and social security, you find that you will need to save about 15% of your income for retirement to accumulate a nest egg of about $2 million. Having that 15% set aside for retirement, you now have 15% remaining in your budget that you're saving, which is about $7,500 a year. Now, you look at that 20-year-old car you're driving. You think you'll be able to keep it for at least another two years, but what can you do to prepare for that? You decide in order to stay on target for your retirement, you'll aim to buy a used car for approximately $10,000 in two years. You plan on saving about $417 to reach your goal of $10,000 in two years. In those two years, you also want to have a wedding. You decide to save the remaining $208 every month for that wedding. And in two years time, you'll have $5,000 for that wedding. Lastly, you'd like the option and the ability to purchase a home in five years when you're 30 years old. You would ideally be making this down payment with your partner and want to contribute at least half of that payment. Considering your location and where you will be in life at the time, you find that a home valued at around $200,000 would fit your needs. At this point, you have already allocated two years worth of savings. So you decide that you'll start saving for this down payment on year three. In year three, you'll allocate all of your savings into your down payment, which is about $7,500 a year. In three years, you would have accumulated $22,500. However, you at least wanted to contribute $25,000 to the down payment with your partner, and you'll have to decide what to do instead. There are several things you could do. You could reduce payments to your retirement and make catch-up contributions in later years. You could reduce the cost of your wedding or not have one at all. You could try to prolong the use of your car or find a cheaper car to buy in the future. The compound interest and the possibility you may not be able to do catch-up contributions makes you choose not to delay your retirement payments. You and your partner want to have a wedding and it would give you an irreplaceable memory. You don't think your car will last much longer than two years, and you would like the security of buying a used car that is at least $10,000. You and your partner finally decide to wait one more year before purchasing a home to have a larger down payment as you do not need the extra room until your first child anyway. So in this example, you're on track to hit your retirement goal, you're saving for a new car, and a wedding in two years, and by age 31, you'll have a down payment on a house. Use this example as a guideline for your own personal finance goals. You will be able to hit your retirement goals while still saving for your short-term goals. 
And this doesn't just apply to these big life events, it uses the plan for vacations, college funds, or business endeavors. What stands in the way of accomplishing our goals is simply not taking the time to plan for them. If you at the very least try to plan for a goal and realize you will come short, you'll have the opportunity to make changes. You can change your target, change the length of time, or adjust your allocations from what's not valuable to what is. Personal finance is about taking control of your money and wealth. Channel your wealth to what is most important to you, reduce regrets, and achieve your dreams. I hope this example and guideline helps you on your financial journey. Leave a like and subscribe to continue our financial journey together, and I will see all of you next time.